and welcome to the Fairfield University Alumni Career Webinar Series. My name is Julie Tizzoli. I'm from the class of 1985, and I'm the Manager of Employer Relations and Alumni Career Development. Our webinar today is The U Factor, Self-Awareness as a Career Transition Tool. I want to welcome and thank all of our alumni who have taken time out of their day to join us. All of our alumni career webinars are recorded and can be found on our website at www.fairfield.edu slash alumni career. The recording of this webinar will be posted in three to five business days. Be sure to check out all of the job search and professional development topics that are recorded and stored there. If you experience any technical difficulties, please email me or send a message through the chat box and I will try to help you. Also, there's going to be a survey at the end. Please take a minute to fill it out and provide any feedback and ideas. Cache will be happy to answer questions at the end of the presentation. Please type your questions into the question box as you think of them. I will post them to Cache for you. The question box is located in the control bar and will show up when you click on the Go To Webinar View menu in the upper right-hand corner. I am now pleased to welcome and introduce our webinar presenter today. Cache Prescott is the owner and chief possibilities officer at Shift Matters LLC. Cache is a corporate trainer, speaker, and coach who empowers individuals, teams, leaders, and business owners to make shift happen in business, career, and life. She owns Shift Matters the personal and professional development firm specializing in personal leadership development and career transition. A social scientist and I.O. practitioner by training, Cache brings 15 plus years of training and development experience to the table and a passion for the human side of the workplace. Her expert advice has been featured on Daily Worth, Fast Company, Flex Jobs, International Business Times, Learn Best, Monster, and Recruiter.com. Cache also speaks and writes on business, career, leadership, and personal development matters for various platforms. Her amazing professional branding prowess can be witnessed as a contributor to the recently published resume writing book, Modernize Your Resume. Cache obtained a BA in Sociology from the University of Virginia, an MA in Industrial Organizational Psychology from Fairfield University, those tags, and an MA in Sociology from the University of Georgia. She's also a PHR and SHRM CP certified and a certified professional career coach. So we are ready to go, Cache. Thank you so much for being here and spending this time with us. And I'm going to hand it over to you now. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. And hello, everyone, and I hope you have your favorite drink of choice and uh, piece of paper and pen handy um, because I'm going to be giving you a lot of information in relation to the conversation on self-awareness and how it's so vital in your career transition. And so we'll just go ahead and jump into the conversation. I want to start off by asking you a question first though. Hold on one second. All right, here we go. So this is going to be the one and only poll question that we have. But that question is, what type of career transition would you like to make or are you looking to make? I'm assuming if you are participating in this webinar or listening in on this webinar that you're looking to make a transition. And so here are your few choices. Um, advancement or promotion. So you're looking for advancement in your current uh, position you want to make a career change or completely reinvent your career. You're looking to relocate or just kind of have a change of scenery. And uh, you, or you're looking to just move from being an employee to an entrepreneur. Or finally, you don't have one, you're not trying to make one of these career transitions, you're trying to make a different one. For instance, leaving the workplace completely or uh, returning to the workplace after some time out of the workplace. So if you could choose which one of these fits you, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, everybody, if you can see on your screen, most people have voted. That's fantastic. Um, so once we have collected everybody, we will uh, read them aloud. Thanks for participating. Okay, I'm going to close this down now. we got a good group of us who 
it's in. Here we go. And now, you guys should all be able to see this, but um, for you, let's see, advancement and promotion was 29% of the audience. Career change okay. and reinvention is 48%. Uh, job relocation, 10%, and other career transition is 14%. Okay, good. Okay. So we have a fair mix of people that are looking for different types of transition, uh, but this information applies no matter what the transition it is that you're trying to do. So um, I just want to also ask you guys to think about when you think of career transitions, what types of tools tend to come to mind? And you can just type that information in, in the chat box um, just so everyone else can see it and you can share with everyone. Okay, so you wanted them to uh, maybe type out a few. Um, yeah, just a, a few of the career transition tools that you've used thus far. When you're doing career planning or job search, what are some of the things that you tend to use? Okay, so if you guys see your chat box, you should be able to uh, type something in there and let's see. Okay, I think we've got actually the question box here, so good. Okay, and everybody, I'm getting a couple of people that said they don't have sound, but it looks like most people are, are back in with sound. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So the things I'm hearing so far, um, Cache, LinkedIn, Indeed.com, networking and LinkedIn, um, network, LinkedIn network former managers. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, and, and these are the, uh, these are great things that you're putting up there. Uh, when most people think of career transition tools, they think about the technical side, the how-to side of the process, um, the updating your resume or update, updating your LinkedIn profile, networking, job search websites, uh, preparing for your interview, and the list goes on and on. But most of us tend to skip a very important part of the process, and that is the you factor. Um, and this involves just kind of taking the necessary time to check in with yourself for clarity before jumping into the how-to or the technical, before you go to LinkedIn, before you go to update your resume, checking in with yourself to really figure out what is your next obvious step. And that's what we're going to be discussing here. So in our time together, I apologize. This is not advancing, so I apologize. Here we go. So in our time together today, we're going to focus on three specific areas. The first thing we're going to focus on is just defining what self-awareness is. Um, just to ensure that we're all on the same page in our conversation about this particular area. Next, we're going to discuss the self-awareness essentials and that's just the factors that are related to being self-aware be or becoming self-aware. And that includes things like your beliefs, your values, your personality, and a few others. And then finally, we'll focus on the actual career transition action plan because I don't want to just give you information that you can't do anything with. I want you to take this information and apply it to your own career transition. And as someone that's actually participating in this webinar today, the whole purpose is for you to be able to, once again, define self-awareness and discuss its role in your specific career transition. Really have the tools to figure out who you are as a person and recognize who what makes you take as a professional since we're specifically talking about career transitions and finally implementing that plan uh, through intense clarity and focus and strategy so without further ado let's talk self-awareness self-awareness generally speaking is just an awareness of you, or an awareness of self. It's having a clear perception of your personality, who you are, and how you thrive as a person, your areas of strength, the things that you do well, your weaknesses or some areas of improvement, the things that you think on a consistent basis, your beliefs that you hold, your motivation or your why, why you do what you do, and 
your emotions that are involved or attached to these areas. Now, the reality is that a lot of us think we know ourselves better than we really do. And even when you do tend to know yourself, uh, things change and you change as a person throughout the course of your, your life. Um, you think about life transitions, and there are a number of them. It could be transitions from college into the workplace or from being single to being married to being a parent. To, you know, There are a number of transitions that we all go through, and with those transitions, they tend to have a profound effect on who we are as people and who we will become. And thus, you know, the things that once made you happy or what's moved you as a person or might, eat, might have even motivated you before may not necessarily motivate you anymore. And these things can change without you even realizing that they have changed. And in an effort to break free, that hidden new you might present itself as anxiety or discomfort or a lack of fulfillment or dissatisfaction, boredom, or just general unhappiness. And you may not necessarily be able to put your finger on what the issue is, but it could be that you're just changing as a person and the things that, again, once made you happy before aren't making you as happy now. Now, self-awareness does tend to get kind of a bum rap because most people consider it to be kind of woo-woo or, you know, one, one of those touchy-feely type things. And if woo-woo isn't quite your thing, I just want to challenge you to reframe your thinking about the concept of self-awareness. It's just simply self-knowledge, just information about yourself that you can use. And it's one of your most valuable and powerful tools uh, in your arsenal because it uh, enables you to clearly understand who you are as a person and the things that really get you going as a person. It helps you to be clear about what you believe in what really is at the center of your world as a person. It also shows you what you're capable of. You know, your, it, show, it really shows your strengths, your skills, your talents, your capacity for just doing well in your career and in life in general. And then finally, it really reveals to you what drives you, what motivates you, what gets you going, um, what makes you do the things that you do. And this is information that you need in a career transition because you want to move with purpose and intention. So the question at hand is why is self-awareness so vital in your career transition? And one reason that it's so vital is that it equips you with pertinent information about yourself. And you can in turn use that information to make informed decisions about your career. Think about it this way. If you were planning to buy a car, would you simply just go ahead and apply for a car loan or take a lump sum out of your bank account and just head to the car dealership? In most cases, no, you're not going to do that. You'd take the time to determine what type of car you're interested in. You know, you'd figure out what make, what model, what year, and what features you want in this car. And you'd also assess what is a good fit for you and your personal needs and your budget. But if you're in this place in space where you're just making decisions just kind of haphazardly, there's a lot that could fall through the cracks. So if you arm yourself with information before diving in, it, 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 you know, in relation to a car search, why wouldn't you do the same thing when it comes to your career? The second thing that self-awareness does for your career transition is that it kind of brings focus to your transition efforts instead of moving aimlessly. So let's go back to our example of the card search. Um, so if you don't take the time to solidify the details, you have no clue how much you actually need uh, for a loan or to take out of your bank account. And so once you arrive to the, the car dealer, where do you actually begin? You don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what you want. You have no starting point. And that would be the equivalent of, the equivalent of you jumping into a job, uh, onto a job search website like Indeed or LinkedIn, Career Builder, or even Monster, or whatever uh, job search website you might be looking at and hoping that the ideal job will reveal itself to you. And realistically speaking, that's not going to happen. But when you take the time to figure yourself out, to better understand yourself, to better understand 
uh, what, what gets you going, what motivates you, what pushes you in your career endeavors, you're able to narrow down your search to the opportunities that are in line with your specific needs, your wants and your desires. And finally, the reason that self-awareness is so important in this conversation is that it empowers you to define success on your own terms. And sometimes when you're thinking about making a career transition, for instance, if you're seeking out advancement or promotion, it might be because that just seems like the next obvious step in your career pro progression or because that's what others expect from you. We live in a world where we're kind of inundated with images of what success is or how it should look, but what if someone else's idea of success isn't a good fit for you? Now, you have to answer the questions of what it is that you want to do. What does a successful next step look like for you and in your mind? Because ultimately, you have to live with the choices that you make. And using someone else's definition of success in your career planning process takes the focus off of the very person that counts in this discussion, and that's you. So now that we've taken the time to discuss the concept of self-awareness and why it matters to this conversation, we're going to take a dive into the various factors that are related to self-awareness and to this conversation on uh, career transition. So the first thing I want to discuss are your thoughts, I'm sorry, your thoughts and your beliefs. And when it comes to your thoughts and your beliefs, we're, we're basically talking mindset and, or your way of thinking. And your way of thinking or your mindset are just a collection of your beliefs and your thoughts. And your mindset ultimately affects your self-esteem and your self-worth. And it dictates how you interpret or respond to people or situations, i.e. your career transition. Um, um, if you've ever heard the book Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Dr. Carol Dweck, she discusses two types of mindsets. Is there's the fixed mindset, and that's just simply the belief that your abilities, intelligence, traits, and more are fixed and cannot be changed. And then there's also the growth mindset that says that your abilities, intelligence, and traits, and more can be developed through a willingness to learn and work hard. And I, only, I bring this up because this, if you are a person that has a fixed mindset, that can affect your job search process. That can affect your career transition. Because if you don't have the belief that you can do more or be more or uh, gain the skills necessarily, uh, necessary to get a job that you are seeking, then you're going to set yourself up for failure in the situation. Or you may not even pursue the opportunity because you don't believe that you have what it takes to even get that job. But if you're a person that comes from the growth mindset and you put that into play, then you believe that you are able to do this. Even if you don't necessarily have the skills right now, you believe that you can obtain the skills and you may be more willing to take chances and apply for jobs that may seem as if they're out of range or out of your reach. But coming back to the conversation on thoughts and beliefs, your thoughts are simply the process, your process of thinking. It's your mental activity. And they, in turn, form your beliefs. And your beliefs represent your personal view of the world. So your beliefs can be self-generated, something that you derive, you know, conclusions that you derive from, or they can be the sum of your experiences. So from how you were raised to the environment that you grew up in, uh, to the people that you've been around or, you know, experience you've, experiences you've had in the workplace, all those things attribute to the things that you believe to be true. And one thing about beliefs is that it doesn't matter if they've been proven or not, people still hold them. They don't have to have a, uh, an, any fact-based uh, basis behind them. So just keep that in mind. One thing I wanna challenge you in this conversation on thoughts and beliefs is to really take some time to think about your own thoughts and beliefs. Which of your thoughts and beliefs, if any, may be serving as limitations in your career transition. What are some things that may be getting in the way of you moving forward or taking chances to apply for new positions or do something new? If you are, you, you might be in a place of fear. Fear may be holding you back. 
uh, you may be in a place of doubt. If you believe that you don't have the capacity to do something, that may be holding you back from moving forward. So one thing I, I encourage you to do is make a list of those beliefs or mindset roadblocks that could be getting in the way of you moving forward or hindering you in your career transition. Next we're going to discuss your values. And your values serve as your personal moral compass. They are your principles, your guidelines, standard of behavior, kind of your guiding light as to how you live your life. And your values are formed by, uh, they're kind of formed by your beliefs and your thought systems and they come from internal and exter external sources like, again, your family, your friends, your culture, traditions, um, even the media now nowadays to include social media. All these things form your values. And one thing you need to be clear about is the things that you do value. A lot of people, if I were to ask you the question, what are your three to five core values? Many people wouldn't be able to just answer that question without thinking about it. And this is something you, sh you need to know because it does affect the way you move in your life. It does affect your career. It does affect the opportunities that you will pursue. And values can include, you know, your, your core values, for instance, my own core values are faith, family, and freedom. And so when I'm pursuing any opportunities in life, whether it be professional or personal, those things come to the forefront because those things affect the decisions that I will make. So you need to be clear about what your three to five core values are. And in addition to knowing those things, you also need to know your values non-negotiables. What are the things that you are unwilling to negotiate on? And here's what I mean by the non-negotiables. When I do career coaching with clients, I ask them to write a list of non-negotiables in relation to their next opportunity, meaning the things that they're unwilling to compromise on when it comes to taking on a new opportunity or moving into a new opportunity. And this kind of helps to figure out if a career opportunity is a good fit for you. If one of your core values is family and after interviewing with the company, you find that there, you'll be working 50 to 60 hours a week, that may be in conflict with that particular value of family if the job will force you to spend less time with them. So these are the things you need to keep in mind and know ahead of time so you can kind of figure out if something may or may not be a good opportunity for you so you don't waste your time going down a path that may lead to a dead end for you when you could have avoided it completely. So again, I challenge you to ask yourself, what are my three to five core values? And when you're thinking about this and coming up with this list, don't think about the things that are supposed to be your values or what you think you're supposed to value based on what other people have told you or based on how you've grown up. Be honest with yourself and really be clear about your values. If you value money, but you don't think that you're supposed to, that, that, that is your truth. Put money down. If it's success, put money down. If it's achievement, whatever it is, there's no right or wrong answer. Just simply be honest with yourself. And again, be clear about your non-negotiables as well. Then your emotions are uh, come next in the conversation. And your emotions speak volumes if you just take the time to listen to them. You need to pay attention to your emotions throughout your uh, career transition process. From the start through the uh, very end of the process, you need to pay attention to your emotions because they can tell you things that you may not be paying attention to. So what I mean by that is what emotions do you have around this idea of actually making a career transition? You know, are you feeling sadness? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling boredom? What feelings are making you think about the fact that you may want to transition? And they don't necessarily have to be negative feelings as well. It could be you're really excited about what it is that you're doing, you love it, you enjoy it, and you would like to take on more responsibility. So that's why you might be uh, seeking out a promotion or advancement. So just check in just to see what the feelings are because they really will tell you uh, or help you figure out what direction you should be going in. You also need to pay attention to your emotions throughout the course of the transition because of the fact that 
there are a lot of psychological obstacles that you may face within uh, this particular uh, process. Sometimes um, when you are moving into something new or potentially moving into something new, you might mourn uh, the idea of leaving your past identity. Moving into something else might be exciting, but you still may mourn who it was that you were as a professional before. So you might have an identity crisis. Um, you may be feeling as if you're suffering from the imposter syndrome and, you know, who am I to apply for this position? Who am I to think that someone would give me this opportunity? You know, the doubt, um, the fear, all these things can really um, set your emotions on uh, off on a, a tangent and make you go in a different direction and, make, and leave you spinning and uh, make you feel things that you hadn't anticipated. Your feelings might also, or your emotions might also tell you that it might be time for you to take a break if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're um, not feeling as if you're making any traction. You may just need to take a break from the transition process and um, do something to enjoy yourself. But you have to check in with yourself and these feelings and um, put a name to them. Help you, uh, help your, help you throughout the process to figure out, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Why am I feeling it? And then really. Uh, Use that information to put yourself on the right track, whether it's moving forward with something, taking a pause to breathe and take a break and then come back to it or completely stopping. Check in with those emotions because they will tell you things that you may not be paying attention to. Finally, uh, uh, well, the next thing we're going to talk about is your personality. And that is just um, that all the things that make you you, all the things that contribute to who you are as a person. There's something called a personality continuum, and generally speaking, most people hear about introverts and extroverts, um, but there's also something called ambiverts. So introverted people tend to be uh, people that, are, um, that need quiet time to recharge. They get their energy from being uh, alone rather than being with other people. They tend to be great listeners. They often uh, prefer to work alone. They are usually very self-aware, very self-reflective and observant, and they don't prefer to do a lot of talking. They do, they do a lot more listening. And these are all gener generalities um, when it comes to these things. Extroverts, on the other hand, they are energized by being around with other people and interacting with others. They thrive in social settings, and they tend to feel drained by being, uh, from being by themselves. They enjoy talking, and they are usually seen as more assertive and more expressive. And ambiverts are the people that are usually in the middle. They're usually a fair mix between introverts and extroverts. So it might be the person that enjoys being around people, but they still need time to go off and recharge on their own. And so knowing this information is very helpful in knowing what types of work environments you may work best in. If you're an introvert, you might do well uh, do, um, working in a work from home position. It gives you that autonomy and that time alone that you need and just to be away from other people. If you're an extrovert, on the other hand, you might love, you may love working in an office setting and doing teamwork and group work and just being amongst people. But you need to know this information about yourself in order to best choose career opportunities that are a good fit for you. And your talents and skills also kind of uh, attribute to this conversation as well. And before we jump into this conversation, I want to quickly differentiate between talent and skill. So your talent is your innate ability to do something. And that's just the ability you were actually born with. It's not something you had to hone or uh, grow or nurture or develop. It was just natural ability. Skill, on the other hand, is a learned ability. This is something that's developed and acquired over time. For instance, some people, singing comes naturally to them. It's something they've been able to do since they were able to talk, while others have to cultivate and nurture that skill through voice lessons. So you need to take some time to just really get clear about your skills, and that's both soft skills and hard skills. And soft skills are more the interpersonal skills um, that are just you, between you and another person. So that could be problem solving, it could be communication, um, empathy, and then hard skills are the more technical, tactical side of the, um, 
map. So that could focus on computer programming. It could focus on knowing a specific software or um, a, um, how to uh, navigate through a specific system that you might be working with at work. And so get clear about where your skills lie in those areas. And then your talents. What are the things that you are just a natural at? Uh, this information is very helpful to you in your career transition because it kind of serves as breadcrumbs along the path to your next chapter. Uh, your skills and your talents provide you with clues of what might be a good occupational fit for you. And I want to forewarn you that even though things, you, you may be skilled at doing something or you may have a talent for doing something, it doesn't always necessarily translate into your next career. Uh, sometimes when you enjoy doing something just as a hobby, if you turn it into your career, it tends to lose its luster. It may not be as fun and then it just may take the joy out of it for you. But you still need to know this information so you can make informed decisions moving forward. And then you also need to be clear about the areas of improvement, the things, the skills that you might need to obtain in order to uh, be a quality candidate for a position you may be considering. Um, just again, look at those skills that are, that the job requires and see if you match up to it. And if there are some things that you might be lacking in, you at least know that and you can take, uh, you can take control of the situation by exploring options for sharpening your skills in those areas. So what are you naturally talented at? What skills do you possess? And if you are having a hard time thinking about this, think about what other people say you are amazing at or that you do extremely well. What do people always come to you for? For me, it used to be um, that people would, all, people would always come to me for resume writing or help with the resumes or preparing for a job. And this wasn't something that I was doing professionally at the time, but they always came to me for that. And it eventually turned into what my business was, but at that time, I, I didn't even think about it. I just did it. So what do people come to you for and you don't even think about it as being a skill? And then on the other side, what skills might you need to improve upon in order to make your desired career transition? Now, we discussed your beliefs, your thoughts, your emotions, your skills, and your talents, and that all lends to the conversation on your motivation. They all attribute to your, the conversation on motivation. When it comes to your career transition, what is your why? What's ultimately driving your decision to make a change? And I want you to just think about that a bit. And the reality is that for each of you, the variables that contribute to the why equation will vary because each of these factors vary. And what I mean by that is, as, as we mentioned, we all have our individual beliefs and thoughts. We all have different ways that we feel about different situations. And since all of those things vary uh, for each of us, the things that attribute to our why will vary as well. And your belief, for instance, your beliefs differ from the next person's or your values may not align with someone else's. And so you need to be clear about all these things and how they fit into your why equation. Um, and being clear about your why and being clear about what motivates you and gets you going is very helpful to the conversation because your motivation is what drives you in your career endeavors. Your motivation is what helps you progress and keep moving in your career. So you need to be clear about why it is that you're doing what you're doing. And you also need to be clear about what does not motivate you. Because if you put yourself in situations that are not motivating to you, that make you feel less than, that make you feel as if this is not what I want to do, this is not where I want to be, you're going to be back in the same place and space where you need to find your next chapter or make another career transition. Now that we've discussed all the things that attribute to self-awareness, we're going to talk about the, um, put all these things into your career transition action plan so you have a plan for moving forward in your career transition. So your career transition action plan. It, I use something called the discover, define, and design process. And 
this is something that I, I I came up with, but I developed it because this is exactly what I went through when I was in that process of trying to figure out what came next for me a few years ago um, when I was a bit confused and um, just not sure as to what it was that I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something, but I could not put my finger on exactly what it was. And that what that looks like is, first, the discover process. This is just keying into your self-awareness. Honestly assessing where you currently stand in life, in your career, and discovering all those things that we talked about. Defining what you want your professional look, life to look like um, when you're moving forward. What is it that you're working toward? What is it that you want? So that you can be very clear about that before you make any moves. And then finally, designing, putting the plan into place to get to where you'd like to be. So the first part, as I mentioned, is discover. So with discovery, that's just really and truly figuring out who you are as a person. And that, again, is the self-awareness part of the conversation, just knowing yourself. So again, we will start with why, but before we can get to the why, you have to explore your beliefs. You have to be clear about the things that you're thinking, the things that you're thinking that may be holding you back, the things that uh, you value in your life that are affected by your career choices, your emotions that um, might be brought up by your current career situation, the emotions that you may have in making this transition or moving into something else, your personality, who you are as a person and how you function, and again, your strengths, your talents, your capacity, your areas of improvement. All of these things lend to the conversation on discovering who it is that you are and knowing who, how you move in this world. And then finally, just as I mentioned, recognizing how these factors affect you as a professional because they all attribute to who you are in your workplace, in your business, in your side hustle, whatever it is that you're doing professionally, all these things somehow, some way come together to uh, affect how you move in that capacity. One thing that I highly suggest that you do is perform a personal audit. Uh, if this is a SWOT analysis, but this is just going to be a SWOT analysis for yourself. So I suggest really taking a look at your internal strengths, and those are your skills, your talents, um, the, the soft skills, the hard, hard skills, um, all the things that you have going for you in making a career transition. Then move to the weaknesses, and these are your internal weaknesses. What are the things that might be working against you within that um, you may need to address. It could be a lack of skills, it could be your limiting thoughts, um, it could be your mindset roadblocks. What is it within you that might be serving as a weakness in your career transition? Next, you want to explore your external opportunities. Uh, what are some opportunities for you to make this transition? What are, uh, you know, are there job opportunities that you've heard of? Are there people that you could reach out to? Are there, um, uh, you know, are there ways for you to make money uh, and just kind of test the waters? Uh, can you just volunteer to see if this is something you like and get a feel for it before you make the commitment? What are the opportunities for you to make a successful career transition? And finally, what are the external threats to your career transition? And so it could be something like, um, it could be a monetary issue. If you are trying to make a career transition but the jobs that you're looking at are paying less than what it is that you're currently making and that could be a problem for you budget-wise, that's a threat to your career transition. This is just a way for you to really and truly assess the whole situation and be honest about the whole situation and to take every factor into consideration before making a hasty move. So I challenge you to do this, to take the time to do this for yourself, and again, be honest in each of the areas because it doesn't hurt anyone but you if you are not honest about these answers. Next, after we've taken the time to discover, it's time to define. And what I mean by define is explore and decide the path that you think you want to go on with your career transition. First, I suggest creating an ideal career profile. And what that looks like is really um, illustrating for yourself, what does your career, ideal career look like? What are you looking for? What are the attributes of it? 
What type of people do you want to work for? What type of organization or company? Uh, what's, where's the ge what's the geographic location? Um, what kind of benefits would you get? What type of responsibilities would you have? All these questions are vital questions for you to be clear about what type of work you're looking for. Um, do you want to work from home? Do you want you know, a flex schedule? Do you want to uh, be able to work by yourself? What is it that you're looking for? Be crystal clear about this. So again, you can find the right opportunities. What does your boss look like? Do, is that somebody that's over your shoulder every five seconds giving you all the answers or do you want autonomy? Do you want uh, more responsibility? Do you want to manage people? All of these things need to be explored in your ideal career profile. And then when you have that information, you can research relevant career opportunities, the opportunities that might be that might actually fit in with what you are looking for. And then you can also reach out to your network to ask questions, to do informational interviews, just to get um, information from people about what it is that they're doing, because they might not have access to um, information that you may not be privy to. They can t help you um, decide whether a path is a good one for you or not. They can give you the pros and cons to situations. Um, so this is a time of just exploration and research to really get all your ducks in a row so you can make an informed decision as to which path it is that you would like to ultimately take. And then finally, design. This is where you're going to, and you know, the rubber meets the road and you're going to develop and execute your plan. Now that you've kind of decided, okay, this is what I'd like to do. My career transition of choice would be, I want to move from an employee to an entrepreneur. I want to own my own business. So what does that look like? So with that clarity, I highly suggest setting SMART goals and writing them down. And what I mean by SMART is that they're specific, measurable, achievable yet ambitious relevant to you because if you if the goal is not relevant to you or what you're trying to do you're not going to really work hard to achieve it and that it's time bound that you put a date on it so that you know that you you've achieved this specific goal by this particular time or you have not so think about what it is that you want to do so if you want to move from entrepreneur from employee to entrepreneur what are the things that you need to do you know, you need to choose your business idea. You need to register your business. You need to um, decide on who it is that you want to serve. There's a number of different goals that you have to work toward in order to make that happen. So sit down and write down your goals. Write down the things that need to be done. And again, put them in a smart format. Write them down because if you don't, then you have no way to go back and assess whether or not you've actually met the goal or to um, be flexible and bend to flex as needed. And also, you absolutely need to update and overhaul and target your career materials. Um, long, it, it, you know, you can no longer use the one size fits all resume when you're doing your career search. So if you're applying for jobs or career opportunities, you have to make sure you target all of your uh, marketing materials your cover letter, your resume, um, all this information to the specific job. And I always suggest using the job posting to see what keywords to use, um, what language are they using, what core skills and competencies are they looking for, and make your resume and your cover letter accomplishment and achievement based, not simply a, a list of your duties and your responsibilities, but what is it that you did that was above and beyond your uh, duties and responsibilities? And once you've come up with this plan and you execute or implement the plan, you also need to exercise flexibility because things don't necessarily always go as planned. And you may have to bend and flex at times. You also need to make sure you're checking in and monitoring the process and having some self-reflection time really reflecting on how things are going, taking the time to, again, check in with self, check in on your emotions, making sure that there are no negative psychological effects or obstacles that are standing in your way. And again, um, 
just seeing what's working, what's not, and moving forward in your process. So to sum it up, as I mentioned before, this process is the discover and define uh, design process and this is what you need this information to be able to make an informed decision as to move forward how to move forward your career transition is or will be a personal process there is no one size fits all um, each of you are making transitions that are going to be different from the next person the things that you are going through the, the, while some things may be similar they're not going to be exactly similar your process is going to be different because you're coming from a different place in space. Your personal responsibilities, your personal life, each of these variables vary from person to person. Also, self-awareness serves as a foundational building block to effectively determining what's next for you. You have to know yourself. You have to know you, what's going on in your life and your situation in order to make an informed decision about how to move forward in your career. And then finally, self-awareness is a lifelong effort. It's not something that's going to, it's not a one and done type thing. This is something that you're going to consistently go through. And, you know, a few years from now, you may want to transition into another career opportunity based on where you are in life at that point. So keep this in mind and make sure that you're always taking that time to pay attention to self and so that you can make the best decisions for yourself. And... I want to thank you for your time and for taking the time to listen to this webinar. And if you decide that you would ever like to reach out to me, this is my contact information. And if you're interested, I offer a free 20-minute consultation. And this is the URL. It's calendly.com slash cache slash 20 men. And I will gladly... Um, just take a moment to just talk to you and get a feel for who you are and what your um, situation is. And if I can help, I would love to do so. But even if I can't, I will point you in the direction of people that might be a better fit. So with that said, does anyone have any questions? Hi, Cache. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Uh, we got a lot of great information. Um, I have a couple of questions in here, but please, everybody, if you have a question, put it, type it into the question box, and I will ask Keshe for you. Um, first question, how do you get around databases for job listings? Is that that ultimate question? <laughs> Some actually extract off your resume, so you, don't, you can't control what you want to get across. So can you read thing, um, Yeah, Go ahead. Sure. So um, when it comes to like the applicant tracking systems, um, one thing that I highly suggest is that you have three versions of your resume. So when I was doing resume writing, you of course have the Word document version, then you have a PDF version, and then you have something called the plain text version uh, or the ASCII version. It's a whole bunch of letters, but it basically just means plain text, and that is the completely unformatted version of your resume. And that is the version that I suggest that people um, submit to applicant tracking systems when um, they have to submit online because when you submit a Word document version to that, um, a lot of times it doesn't pick up on the keywords, it doesn't pick up on information because of all the extra formatting like the bold or the um, uh, italicized um, font or the bullet points, all that stuff kind of gets jumbled up. And so you may not get through because it's not picking up on the simple keywords. And like I said, use those keywords that they are using in that specific job posting because um, that's what they're going to be looking for when they're uh, screening or pre-screening um, potential candidates because that's what they put in their job posting. So have a plain text version of your resume to submit to online tracking systems or, or applicant tracking systems. Oh, fantastic. That's great advice. Uh, okay. Um, another question is, you know, everything that you said was fantastic. What um, advice do you have for people for setting aside time for doing this in our busy lives? Oh, that, <laughs> that's always an interesting question because I, so I, I ask myself that often, but one thing I, I suggest is that um, you have to make time for it. We make time for any and everything else. 
you know, and even the stuff that's not as important, like sitting on Facebook and scrolling through and seeing who, who's doing what. So I suggest if you are a morning person like myself, getting up just a little bit earlier, maybe 30 minutes earlier, and just taking the time to, again, if you're in the uh, discover part of the process, taking time to learn self. And one way you could do that is, for instance, um, go online and take free online personality assessments to learn your, uh, learn your personality. Learn if you're an introvert. Learn if you're an extrovert or ambivert because this information is so key. Um, I had taken personality tests a few years ago but never really paid attention to it. But now, uh, now that well, partially because I do this for my business and uh, as a parent as well, I'm seeing the role that personality really does play in a lot of things that we do in our lives. Um, I watch my daughter, she's an introvert like myself, and, but it helps me to better understand her and again better interact with her because I understand her personality. Whereas another one of my daughters, she's extroverted and I get her too. So I understand how I have to uh, interact with each of them. For myself, I understand where, you know, I, as part of corporate speaking, I may have a four hour workshop that I do, but I know that n not to schedule anything afterwards because I am so drained from being up there and talking and interacting for four hours straight that I need to come home and I need time to re rejuvenate and renew myself and recharge by myself. So just simply taking time to just go online and do something like that. Or if you're beyond the discovery part and you are in that um, design part and you just taking 30 minutes to sit down and really get clear on what your goals are. Okay, you, you've discovered, you've figured out what it is that you want to do. But what are your goals? How are you going to get there? Who are you going to talk to? Who do you need to reach out to? When are you going to update that resume? When are you going to update your LinkedIn profile? Sitting down and making a plan for making that happen. If you're somebody that um, works better at the end of the day, schedule it. Put it on your calendar um, from 8 to 8.30. I'm specifically focusing on this. Put your phone on airplane mode and do what you got to do. That's awesome. Uh, that's um, great advice, and I, I think you also can connect it to your SMART goals. If you've got your goals in front of you, then you know you need to put the time into it, right? Exactly. All right. Well, awesome. I have no other questions coming in, so uh, I think we have uh, – oh, okay. Hold on. One more came in. Um, you mentioned okay. having a side hustle earlier. Can you expand on that and how someone could best plan, um, how, could best plan and goal set? Sure. So uh, the side hustle is basically, it, for instance, so you have a, your, your nine to five, but you want to do something on the side. Um, you want to start a blog or you want to freelance or you want to serve as an independent contractor or um, become a virtual assistant for people. It just depends on what it is that you're trying to do. So I'll use virtual assistants for, uh, an, as an example because I used to be a virtual assistant. So if you are somebody that's thinking about that path, um, just to have, you know, maybe to make extra money on the side or to do something it is that you love to do, um, but you don't necessarily want to leave your job, what I would do is re um, connect with um, relevant organizations. So for instance, for virtual assistants, they have the International Virtual Assistance Association, or it's called IVAA.org. And I would reach out to, uh, just look at the directory, get a feel for what type of virtual assistance you might want to do. It could be general virtual assistance where you're just doing general admin. It could be HR specific like me, that's what I niched in, and I did HR related um, virtual assistance. It could be social media, could be marketing, PR, uh, technical assistance, website design, it, the, the, the opportunities are endless. But get clear about what it is that you want to do, who it is you want to serve. Um, you may want to serve other businesses. You may want to serve other business owners. You may want to simply contract with another VA that has a team of VAs and not do it as your own business. But again, you need to be clear on what your intentions are and um, what, how much time you want to commit to this. You know, As an independent contractor, you can do it at your leisure. But you need to be clear about, you know, what time you want to spend after work doing this. You know, is it something you just want to work on from 9 p.m. to midnight or first thing in the morning? 
Um, you know, do you want to bring on other people and create your own team so you don't have to do the work and somebody else is doing the work and you're just contracting, subcontracting out work. So just figuring out what it is that you want to do or do you want to just simply, uh, or, or you may be a freelance writer. So reaching out to uh, various outlets um, just to figure out, you know, how you can best make money. That is something a virtual assistant could do as well. But if you just want to be a freelance writer, you need to explore opportunities for just writing. Um, what do you want to write about? What topics do you want to ex explore? Um, uh, what uh, publications are you interested in writing for? Because, of course, not all publications pay. Um, but you may reach out to a business owner that needs um, ghostwriting for their blog posts. So that might be a way for you to explore your freelance writing. But there are so many different ways to um, do the side hustle. And there are some good podcasts on side hustles as well. Um, I want to say there's one called Side Hustle Nation, but I could be make, making that up. But if you go to iTunes and just Google Side Hustle, um, the appropriate podcast will come up. Okay, so I just learned something new. That's amazing. Thank you for all that information. All right, we got another one here. Um, and also, I want to let everybody okay. know that this is being recorded, and it will be uh, available on our website at fairfield.edu slash alumni career um, within three to five business days. Um, last question here, we can get in. How do we learn what kinds of jobs are out there? The job market has changed so much since I began teaching. I am looking for something else, but don't know what is available. Okay, so and you need to be clear about what it is, what type of work is a best, the best fit for you because there's so many different ways to find jobs and that's a scary thing. That, that's the, the really frightening, scary thing because it, it, there's so much information, you don't even know where to get started. One thing I would suggest is using LinkedIn as a tool, actually, um, and this could be if you're looking for the side hustle or a job in general, but getting involved in groups and having conversations with people, asking questions, getting direction, um, if, even if you're just in the exploration phase of things. So for instance, if you, talk, if you teach, and I don't know what areas that you teach in, um, but if, it, if it's um, early childhood education, um, and you're interested in you know, opportunities in that area, but you're not quite sure exactly what area or what grade or um, if you want to do you know, daycare versus being in you know, elementary school, whatever the case is, you can join groups that have people that work in those fields and ask them questions. And people love to um, be wanted <laughs> and they love to feel wanted and they love to um, share their information and their knowledge. These people in these LinkedIn groups will give you tons of information. Um, also, it may be helpful for you to um, do some of these um, career assessments. Again, um, it, as an informal way, you can Google free career assessments or free career tests um, and just kind of get a feel for what type of work it is that you're looking to do, what it is that you're interested in. Because sometimes the things that we think we're interested in um, aren't necessarily in line with what we actually are interested in. So that might be helpful to kind of narrow things down for you. Um, if you're in education, you may be in higher education, and you may need to go to um, specific websites like um, uh, the Chronicle of Higher Education or um, the um, higheredjobs.com, and that might be a better fit for your career search. But it just you, you have to be clear on what it is that you're looking for in order to find out where those jobs may be. And you can go directly to universities. You can go directly to the school sites because those jobs aren't always on the aggregated sites like Indeed. Okay, great. I hope, uh, I hope that was uh, helpful. I know um, Cache brought up a lot of great things. So I'd like to encourage everybody to absolutely contact Cache for her 20-minute consultation. Um, but also we have things available here at the university. So all the information, you know, if there might be an assessment or something that uh, you can take here um, through our counseling department. So please go ahead and check that out on our uh, alumni career webinar pages online. So. Um, Again, this was recorded. It'll be online in a couple of days. And thank you so much, uh, Cache. Thank you so much for the time that you have given us, um, your fellow stags, today. We really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you.